Hello viewers and listeners, welcome to Tele Radio Escuela, Tara na, the school on the air program of the Vision of Tagum City. I am your teacher host, Ma'am Jubrina Arimao Sulaiman. Today, we will be learning about scientific investigation, a lesson in grade 7 science, quarter 1, module 1. Come and join us as we begin our hashtag scientific journey. Go get your modules, your notebooks, and your writing pen. Make sure you are seated comfortably wherever you are right now. Let me give you our amiable teacher broadcaster, Ma'am Sigrid Bermudez Nicolás. Hello viewers and listeners, how do you do today? Let us all be grateful that we can continue learning through our Teleradio Escuela even amidst this pandemic. This is Teacher Sigrid, your science teacher. Today, we will discuss about the scientific ways of acquiring knowledge, specifically the components of scientific investigations. I sincerely hope that you will enjoy today's discussion. Before we forget, let us first tweet our objectives for today. Towards the end of this episode, we are expected to Number one, identify the steps of the scientific method. Number two, use the scientific method in solving a problem through an experiment. And number three, which is the most important, we will be able to relate scientific method to daily life. Learning about the scientific method enables us to understand things and events through different science process skills. When these processes become part of our system, you will discover that science is not only confined inside the classroom or in the laboratory, and also you will really enjoy doing science, and that I can guarantee you. Now, I need your help. I want to find out a series of steps of the scientific method to become a scientist. Can you help me? Just look at all the things around you. Does something make you curious? Does something seem strange to you? Do you wonder what caused something or why something happens? Like why is the sky blue? Or what makes Zoda fizzy? Yes, the possibilities for observation and questions are quite endless. When you are curious, you begin to observe and ask questions, which will eventually lead you to investigate and come up with a solution to your problem. So let's start! Science is a way of thinking and a way of gathering knowledge around the world that is both accurate and reliable. It is the quest to understand and improve our knowledge of the world around us and how the things in it work and why they work the way they do. Scientists are always curious about the world and how everything works and why it works. After all, curiosity is the mother of invention. The scientific method is a step-by-step -step process that you, as scientists, utilize to give solutions to scientific problems. It is also a series of steps that you perform to figure things out, to get to the bottom of things, to discover to the answers of what and why, and how things work, and how to make things work better. The first step is observation. When using the scientific method to carry out your own investigation, the first thing you need to do is observe. Well, did you know that observation is not just the first step, but as well as the most important step? Yes, indeed, because without this step, all the other steps will not be worth a jot. When you observe, you will be using your senses like your sense of sight, touch, taste, smell, and hearing. Utilizing these senses when observing leads you to the next step, which is when you ask questions like why are oceans salty? Why are there rainbows? 
What is the universe made of? Or how did life begin? And so many more questions that awaken your curiosity. And now that you have made your observations and already asked questions, you need to predict what will happen next. You are going to make or formulate your hypothesis. A hypothesis is not simply a guess. A hypothesis is an educated guess or a tentative answer to a problem. An example of this is when a student thinks that ice will melt faster in juice than it will in water. Maybe he just wants to get a drink of juice out of it. In line with this, let us talk about variables. Identifying and controlling variables in your hypothesis involves the process of deciding which variables will influence the outcome of an experiment. Variables in an experiment may be independent or dependent. The one that is being manipulated or controlled is called the independent variable. This variable is exactly what it sounds like. It is a variable that stands alone and isn't changed by the other variables you are trying to measure. While on the other hand, the dependent variable changes because of a test. It is also the effect that arises from the changes of the independent variable. A while ago in our example, a student made a prediction that ice will melt faster in juice than in water. Now, he tests his hypothesis. He set up an experiment with a glass of juice, a glass of water, and an ice cube for each. And always remember that for the best experiments, only one thing should change. Here, he changed the type of liquid he used but keeping the ice cube, the temperature, and measurements of the liquid the same. Take note that if too many factors change at once, you cannot accurately state what the results are. The liquid should be roughly the same temperature or as close as possible and measured to the same amount, so he left them out to come to room temperature. But this could also be tested right out of the fridge. Set up a stopwatch or set a time limit to observe the changes. Heads up students, it is now time to record and analyze the results. Take note that all the results should be recorded in tabular or graphical forms to see trends. If you're the one doing this experiment, make sure to take note of the changes at specific time intervals or after one set time interval. Was your prediction accurate? If it is not accurate, what do you think are the reasons? At last, we can now draw conclusions. This is the opportunity to talk about your hypothesis, your experiment, your results, and your conclusion, which is the final answer to your problem or experiment. That's it, dear students. Come join me and let us now enumerate the six basic steps of the scientific method. These are number one, make observations. Number two, come up with a question. Number three, develop a hypothesis or prediction. Number four, conduct an experiment or test the hypothesis. Number five, record and analyze the results. And lastly, drawing conclusions. Again, the steps are observation, coming up with a question, formulating hypothesis, conducting experimentation, recording and analyzing results, and drawing conclusions. Very good, everyone. Now, loosen up, kids. I have a game for you. Number one, the scientific method is the key to all discoveries and invention. A, true. B, false. The answer is false. Did you know that most of the discoveries and inventions did not use the scientific method? Because most of them could be accounted to serendipity or accidental discovery. Let's proceed. 
The next item is, the steps of the scientific method follows an order in an exact sequence. Letter A, true. Letter B, false. The answer is false. These elements are interrelated steps, so they don't always function in the same order. Say, for instance, it might be that during experimentation, new problems may crop up, which will lead you to go back to the preceding steps. Okay, next item. Let us use the scientific method in solving a problem through an experiment. Imagine you are in your kitchen holding one big apple. You decided to slice the apples into quarters and spread the slices into the chopping board. Now, let us observe. What do you think will happen to the slices after several minutes? Letter A, the apple slices turn green. Letter B, the apple slices turn brown. And letter C, nothing happens. You got it right. The correct answer is letter B. The apple slices turn brown. Now let's ask a question. What can you put in an apple slice to keep it from turning brown? Letter A, water. Letter B, milk. Letter C, lemon. And letter D, soda. Well, the correct answer is letter C. You get it right this time. If we can do something so that oxidation will not go ahead, we need to inactivate the enzyme that produces the brown pigmentation in the apple slice. And lemon, or any acidic substance for this matter, is very good in doing this. Now let's imagine we are doing an exciting kitchen experiment. Prepare four drinking glasses and pour into each glass the following liquids. Number one, water, and into the second glass goes the milk, the third glass is with lemon, and the fourth glass is with soda. Now put a slice of apple into each glass. Though they all turn brown, which one turns brown first? And what do you think will turn brown last? Hey, hey, don't forget to record the results. Yes, all the slices turn brown, but the slice that turned brown first is the apple submerged in the soda, while the slice submerged in lemon turned brown last. Okay, that's great, students. Now let's proceed to our next step, which is you are required to draw a conclusion based on the results of your experiment. Repeat after me. If I put blank on an apple, then it will not turn brown as fast. Again, if I put blank on an apple, then it will not turn brown as fast. Based on the result, what is the liquid that did not turn the apple brown as fast? Very good! The correct answer is, with glass number 3, lemon. So our conclusion would be, putting lemon on an apple will prevent the apple from turning brown as fast. That was an amazing conclusion indeed. Always remember that acidic substances will turn or will prevent the oxidation reactions in cut fruits. Trivia time! Did you know that many home cooks know that a little lemon juice in water can prevent apples from browning? How does this happen? This is because lemon juice contains high amounts of citric acid which will protect cut fruits from oxidation. Again, you may ask, how does this happen? To find out, we need to look inside the cells of the apple. There are a lot of different bits and pieces inside an apple cell. Inside the cells are phenols and phenolase. When the cell is damaged and oxygen can get inside, it allows the phenolase to change the phenol molecule into a molecule of melanin. A melanin has a brown color. So, 
when we cut an apple, we see phenols being turned into melanin. And this can only happen when the cell is damaged and phenolase comes in contact with oxygen. This is an example of oxidation reaction. What is an oxidation reaction? Oxidation is the loss of electron. Oxidation is very good at taking oxygen. If we can do something to inactivate the phenolase enzyme, then the oxidation reaction cannot go ahead and the brown melanin will not be formed. Heat and acids can make phenolase enzyme inactive, so they will stop the oxidation reaction and the apple flesh will not turn brown. Acid works because oxygen will react with it before it reacts with the polyphenol oxidase enzyme in the fruit. Okay, so now for our hashtag scientific assignment, design a simple scientific investigation about a specific problem in your home. You may write or you may use the scientific method in your investigation. You may write this on a sheet of paper and describe each step that you will do to solve the problem. And to make this more exciting, you may post your experiment in your social media account. Well, anyway, my dear students, that's all for today. I hope that you learned a lot from our discussion and most importantly, I really hope that you enjoy our discussion. Once again, this is Teacher Sigrid saying bye-bye. Keep safe, everyone. See you next time. That was great. Thank you, Ma'am Sigrid Bermudez Nicolás. Thank you, students, viewers, and listeners. Hope you learned something today. Stay tuned for more Hashtag Scientific Adventure. Keep safe, everyone. Bye for now. Aabutin ka ng aming tinig Walang araw na sasayangin Edukasyon ipagpatuloy natin Ano mang pagsubok at mga balakit Kaalaman